how to heal it. Many, there's some very deep esoteric sides yes. of these things. Mm -hmm. So, I, and Ralph has come a long way to be with us. He's really a hero. Please, warm welcome, to Dr. Ralph. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, I will talk about restoring uh, vital energy flows uh, and the water flows and food flows and everything. And that will be about, uh, well, uh, something that is uh, amazing. And I had the personal experience. So I have a piece of land where I put up trees and edible trees. So this is a nice mulberry tree that I planted a few years back and this one is you you whoops sorry uh, this one is where you can not put your hand around anymore so it's like six seven years old brings nice mulberries you could climb into it and I planted another one at the same time it's the th thickness of a thumb and so coming to differences like this what is pretty common, you see one develops, the other doesn't. The soil is the same, same sun exposure. And uh, so I'm a geomancer, but I didn't look at my, same, my own place, so that's typical. But a friend came and she was uh, pointing out, I told her the story and she said, of course, this one is in a place with lots of energy flow, vital energy flow, and the other one is in a place that sucks vital energy. And so, of course, I put a little Lakovsky coil in there. And you see this uh, new, new shoot that developed within a week after putting Lakovsky in it. If the energy flows, vital energy flows don't work out, we can't expect to get a good harvest. We can't expect healthy uh, food and uh, healthy plants. So that's a very, very nice one. And now just uh, take a short moment. Sense your own body. How do you feel? How is your personal energy flow? Did you check lately? I check daily. So mine is here now. So this is zero burnout. This is where I'm now. So that's pretty good for now being stressed after a night of drive and driving. And <laughs> so. You feel energized and the region is supportive, of, obviously, and the, the room is good. It's, it's, uh, it's a room that has more energy than other uh, seminar rooms, I guess. Uh, so well, that's our daily task to keep our energy up and then we don't get ill, we will be happy, don't get dis depressed and so on. All right, and now our society doesn't have a vision where to go, at least not one I know of. So I took the task to make one. So that's my work of the last 30 years maybe, uh, put together with a lot of practical things. And we need something, a blueprint for a good future. And I've worked mainly on rural areas, but I also looked at cities. Most are beyond repair in many aspects, but uh, still we could get uh, rooftop gardens everywhere to like make it more livable. And uh, then also I looked at the seas and that's the aspect to work with the dolphins and whales as the other conscious uh, species that is known on Earth. There are a lot more, I, I guess, but it's like those we know of. And I had some communication with uh, purposes, uh, the, the, the little, um, well, like, like dolphins in the Baltic Sea. And not all of them are tele telepathic, I think, but it's some, some are. <laughs> They're all people. Yeah, uh, like people. Some are developed, some are not. <laughs> and so I want to present for the first time this book, Blueprint. I. Uh, printed some of those uh, and brought them and I really ask for your support because me alone I can't get that out and uh, in my point of view it's really crucial and this is something feasible it's easy to understand and the most fundamental part to create a good future is to build up soil biology to have more vegetation to have forest gardens everywhere, especially in the subtropical areas, 
where people are now not having a future at all. They are sitting around not knowing what to do. And easily they can plant a forest garden and a family can live off that for forever. Food forest. For food forest. And that can change the world and it's, it's doing it already. And it's good YouTube videos doing it and not politicians. Yes. Andrew Millison, look at Andrew Millison, he's done amazing work and it spreads, he now gets uh, in, into the millions of views. Ten years back it was hardly anybody paying attention, but now these guys are doing it and that's great. Part of the vision and I've brought it all together and so please have a look, get a book or get uh, a couple of them to give them to others and give me feedback. It's a preprint, I want your feedback to improve. All right. Um, now it's like, um, and I've written a book, Garden Communities also, so that's like clustering uh, market gardens and having enough people around to well, have a happy life, minimum 150, and so that's a thriving community with enough children and so on. And uh, so that's uh, already published and this is going to be published in the uh, uh, near future. And uh, so I will st start talking about restoring soils on all, all levels because I'm basically coming from the water profession. And I've realized that only if we restore the soils we will have healthy water and enough water. And uh, then um, to raise happiness in your region also regenerative agriculture is better but because then we will have agroforestry, food forests and all that. And um, if we restore the vital energy flows, people can be more happy. Yes. Because it's absolutely crucial for people to have vital energy. And we have sort of made forgotten or we, somehow we, we, we were like brought up in a way that this doesn't even exist. And that's so ridiculous. And it's time about looking at reality. <laughs> even the part of it that we can't see directly or most of us can't but everybody can sense it and I'm doing trainings and now everybody gets it, it's amazing. Ten years back it was very hard but it's not really really getting easy and that's like it's, it's a great uh, pleasure that this goes so well. Um, humans and nature co-develop to their enormous potentials learn it, do it alone with friends and teach it a good future, in my point of view, uh, is very, very feasible. At the moment, we're still on a track that looks a little bit more like the desert planet. <laughs> so a few, very few crazy people are exploiting the Earth to make billions and they are mostly absolutely unhappy. They are the m main victims of all that craziness and uh, hopefully some of them will realize that and like if we get a good vision we can like make a green earth, green, blue, blue green earth and uh, that will be a lot more fun and even 30 billion people could live, live on earth. Uh, it's like all this bullshit about scarcity and all that, that's just like uh, putting pressure on people, make them buy stuff they don't need, make them unhappy to be more uh, compliant and things like that. So that's over, isn't it? So, yes. <laughs> And well, it's like, uh, it's good to be about, uh, uh, among like-minded people and our, our numbers are growing. <laughs> yeah. All right, Professor William Albrecht, so he's one of my heroes. Uh, he was at the University of Missouri in uh, like around 100 years ago. He lived a long life and one of the things he said is uh, he was a soil scientist, very good one. He realized from observation over decades, and this is a quote now, and uh, NPK, this is nitrogen, phosphorus, Potassium. That's the normal commercial fertilizer, mineral fertilizer, that destroys the land, mainly the nitrogen part. Okay, so you're ready for it? NPK formulas, S 
legislated and enforced by state departments of agriculture mean malnutrition, attacked by insects, bacteria and fungi, weed takeover, crop loss in dry weather and general loss of mental acuity in the population leading to degenerative metabolic disease and early death. Wow. <laughs> still making round up. Yeah. Shut that guy up. So this was 100 years back. It was visible. It was even in the US Congress in 1936. Yep. Now there are some people that very few so normally would say okay forget about that nonsense and go back to work with nature. But then there were very few that saw Oh, wow, there is, uh, well, business opportunities. Well, let's make insecticides, fungicides, and all that. So we will make the crops ill, and then we sell people remedies. Well, just like they do with humans. <laughs> and unfortunately, we as the world population were so stupid to follow. So we must not blame them. It's, it's our fault as well. And it's over. And yes. that's something we need to look at. And the great thing is like that is um, developing very fast. And one of the great, great things is the development of regenerative agriculture. And uh, organic agriculture must learn because they still do plow, destroy the soils. They are not really good so far. And their nutrient density is often not that good. Look at the bricks, yeah. <laughs> and I, I translated this to French, so for the French speakers uh, for Monday. Now, story of the olive oil. <laughs> I, I'm giving a lot of presentations, so still mainly uh, Europe, uh, German speaking world, but it's like um, I was invited to Switzerland, where I'm very often. And people inviting me were working with fungi. So they were professionals in inoculating plants with uh, mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal fungi. Those are the uh, fungi that work with the roots of the plants. And one meter of root can be extended by to a thousand meter with mycorrhizal fungi. The plant can order like trace elements from deep down. It can order water when it's dry. It can order specific hormones, stuff. It's absolutely amazing. And now these guys were called, uh, they had a contract with a big olive uh, farm in uh, Italy, 7,000 trees, so not a small operation. And they had this uh, olive tree disease. It's always on the front pages. All the olive trees in the Mediterranean are, are dying. Everything goes down, so uh, making fear again. And these guy, guys were uh, starting to inoculate the, the trees, olive trees, with the specific mycorrhizal fungi. They are very specific. There are thousands, so you must pick the right ones. The companies delivering are mostly delivering uh, something that doesn't work. If, uh, and uh, they knew a company after years and years of tracking, the new company delivering this was one from Poland even. And so cooling chain must be kept. And then uh, they were inoculating the, the olive uh, trees. And uh, as expected, uh, no more uh, olive tree sickness. So the trees recovered very, very quick in a few weeks. Um, so once again, there is no illness like that. It's just dead soil applying fungicides. Huh? How crazy is that? And, but the, the shocking part came later. When they checked their quality of the olive oil, they are measuring the polyphenols in the olive oil. They always had around 250 milli, milligrams per liter or something. And that was considered a very good oil. Now, sent the samples to the lab. Lab said, oh, our equipment doesn't work. Second one, same story. The fourth lab reported, that was already from the US, and they said, okay, it's, it's almost 2,500. 
tenfold, <laughs> ten times more. And so, who has ever had a good olive oil? So you have a good soil, you have soil with mycorrhiza fungi, and then you can have a good olive oil. So it's like, why are things like they are? It's like, why? <laughs> now, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, let's, let's uh, discuss a bit at the end and, and also personally. Stories also in the book. These guys were told not to talk about it. Yep. The olive farm started selling their olive oil as a food, uh, uh, as nutritive agent at, at an astronomical price. Uh, but I'm talking about it. I published that. And so please uh, consider this story and make sure that your farm is supplying mycorrhizal fungi. <laughs> All right. Now, another. Uh, crazy story and that's something we did ourselves so that's Tafsif Shah now doctor he made his doctor with me it's from India uh, Kashmir in the north a huge rice growing country and the government started to or he was asking me after his masters uh, to, he wants to do a doctorate and what what would be a good topic and I asked him what's the biggest problem in your country and he said, well, they are advising the rice farmers uh, to not grow rice anymore. What is craziness in Kashmir, obviously. Nobody follows, but the water is running out. And they were, and I told him, have you ever heard of dry rice production? He hadn't. Uh, it's, well, only 40 years old, so it's like... <laughs> and uh, so um, his task was to make the SRI rice, uh, dry rice production, better. So he intercropped with beans and the biggest problem in dry rice cultivation, so dry rice is wider spacing and the problem, and it's not flooded, and the flooding is to, to control weeds normally, but it, it evaporates water like crazy. And so uh, what uh, he did with farmers in Kashmir and, and in our lab, uh, he intercropped with uh, beans and the beans are pushing very fast, as you know, covering the ground and the weeds didn't have a, sh have a chance. And so the big downside of dry rice was eliminated, plus producing nitrogen in the field, plus having more shade on the ground that's not heating up. So this is available and hardly anybody is paying attention. So that's part of the craziness of our world, why I put all these things together and even many of you who know a lot will find a lot of things that you've never heard of. It's amazing. So the rice row was alternated with the bean row? That yeah. That's, uh, and, and with that it's like uh, another fruit as well. <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. now uh, to, the, to the soil. So this is a plowed soil uh, with uh, like all the chemicals and uh, that's a soil, no, uh, no till or no plow, direct seeding. And uh, so very nice structure. And if you look at it, you will find that the normal agricultural soils are like impervious material, like cement and some really become cement and then uh, production is over, farmers go bankrupt. And then the investment companies come in and say, ah, oh, well, finally we get another piece of land. Yes. You see, it's, 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 they do this in a clever way, but it's like they are destroying themselves too and, and well, they are not happy usually. Um, <laughs> this soil will recharge groundwater uh, in, a, in, a, in a really big way. So a, a good soil can uh, swallow uh, a huge, huge, huge storm, just like that. And such a soil, even a little bit of rain will like evaporate again and a, a severe storm will make erosion, flooding, people dying. And it's, it's, uh, most of that is man-made. Um, yeah. Uh, 
it's the sponge. So we, we want soil like a sponge. <laughs> now this is a video. Um, this um, spring was very, very wet in, uh, in Germany. And so a conventional farmer, his fields were like that. So he was like sinking in and it was like a disaster, land flowing away. And then a regenerative farmer nearby, same conditions roughly. And uh, so he could, he didn't even bring boots. So he just walked on, on in sandals. <laughs> he was sinking in. <laughs> and so that's like the plowing. You, you get a dense uh, sort of cut off of the roots and the water infiltration and like with no till um, you get uh, deeper roots and uh, um, soil like a sponge and that's called regenerative agriculture that's the aim once again and uh, the pioneers in that it's basically built on the work of Rea Trileta who was USDA Department of Agriculture uh, advisor. So Regenerative even came from an official advisor who dared to say, sorry, the last 20 years I have uh, told you lies and bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, and he was starting to explain how, how to work with nature. And he, he was showing good experiments. So he made a video. Without video, we wouldn't know this. But now, with video, this is spreading like wildfire, and that's fantastic. And his videos or presentations were great because he showed a plowed soil and a no-till soil, and they were pouring water, the same conditions there. The, the plowed soil just evaporated or was dissolving, and the other soil is like, like a sponge. It keeps intact and can swallow water, cleans water, and so on. And you build a lot of soil organic matter. And uh, Rea Cholita was training also uh, Gabe Brown. And who has heard of Gabe Brown? So few. Ah, OK. But it's uh, <laughs> now you've heard of him. Uh, get his book, uh, Dirt to Soil. It's amazing. That's a game changer completely. And uh, he was raising his uh, soil organic matter in a very short period of time. And that's restoration of our planet. And that's something what gives us good food. Uh, high nutrient density, you can check with uh, bricks very easily, also in your favorite organic shop. Um, later we go to the cooperative, don't we? We, we check how good they are. <laughs> you, you take the leaf, uh, the leaf sap and you, that's measuring the sugar content, but that's uh, proportional to the uh, nutrient density. So that must be high, above 12 or, or something percent in the, in the leaf. And many don't get that, even organic farmers. So now we can distinguish quality, what keeps us healthy. So not only keeping our vital energy high, but also having all the minerals and the elements that we need. So being even more healthy. I've, I've been, become younger the last 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> and happy. Uh, I was happy before. I, I I was always happy because I always followed what I really like to do, and that makes you happy automatically. <laughs> Not that there are some challenges on the way, but it's like well, yeah, yeah. So nutrients. <laughs> yeah. lack of lithium makes you depressive and uh, well and dangerous for society. <laughs> Forbidden in the U as a. Uh, uh, food additive. That's not, not kidding. Um, the happiness element is forbidden in, in the EU. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's so funny. So it's, it's so ridiculous that it's uh, sort of, uh, it can, that can go. <laughs> People don't follow it anyway. You can order it on, on internet anyway. So that's ridiculous from the beginning. Another big part of restoration is to really go for like mob grazing. So animals should always be outside. Keeping animals in these cages all year round, industrial uh, animal husbandry, that needs to stop right away because that's also destroying the energy of our planet because that's giving so much 
low vibes and so much uh, like uh, unhappiness and that falls back not only on the meat eaters but on the whole regions and so that is also something which shouldn't be happening so you can keep animals on small daily portions and you build soil with that people uh, getting better meat better milk and so on and that's also something Gabe Brown does and uh, so that's that's sort of map mob grazing it's a planned rotation of the grazing. yes and it's all not easy so it's all scientific systems that you need to study but this is now it's known very yeah it's very very powerful and so Gabe Brown's book dirt to soil and this is a very interesting book so it's like a family saga of a 2,000 hectare farm 5,000 acres that was almost yeah. dead and he restored it and uh, yeah look at his presentations absolutely great all right so more to come regenerative agriculture normally has five principles um, and something is missing there is new work by um, uh, Dr. Uh, David Johnson uh, from um, uh, New Mexico S S State University and he has recently become sort of famous in the field uh, he's a so soil biologist and he was looking what is really feeding the soil or the well the biology the plant what makes plants grow well and coming back to NPK, nitrogen phosphate potassium, what is normally put to the land, nitrogen, so the growth, the production is the red bars and the mineral nitrogen, we don't want mineral nitrogen, we want organic nitrogen in the soil, so the mineral nitrogen, zero, the best yields, very high, low yields, and that's clear because like Soil life hates mineral nitrogen. It's even toxifying it. And phosphorus, it's also no connection. Potassium also, when it's very low, you get a good yield. And organic matter is not really a clear connection. And so he was puzzled. And uh, so the, the stunning thing is that what came out was a big, big surprise because a very clear correlation to the uh, plant growth to the yield is the ratio of fungi, soil fungi to bacteria. This came out only a few years back. It was known 100 years back too, but it was uh, like uh, empiric. And now there's scientific proof that the ratio of soil fungi to soil bacteria is crucial for soil health, for our health. And remember the mycorrhizal fungi, the olive oil story? And that's really, really great. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so this was something what, what came in. Uh, he works together with uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham, one of the big um, soil scientists around the world. And uh, the uh, ratio we normally have in, in the fields, uh, arable lands, is ideal for weeds. Isn't that great if you, if you sell herbicides? <laughs> and, and then you sell a herbicide called glyphosate that is a chelator and now there are farmers in India but also some in Germany that use coca-cola as a herbicide works just as well it's a bit cheaper of course it's illegal <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and of course I wouldn't take Coca-Cola, but like phosphoric acid plus sugar. So that would be the recipe for making a herbicide, because that's really a bottleneck to find a herbicide. It's not so easy to get away from them. But if you use uh, glyphosate, you have a chelator, and a chelator is a material that binds... Oh, oh. 
<laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And boom, it is taking away our minerals. It, it's chelating trace elements that we urgently need. So, what a nice surprise. So, like, how can anybody design something like that unless this anybody is a psychopath? <laughs> so, that's giving us a clue. But now we learn having um, other options, uh, phosphoric acid and sugar. The sugar, when it degrades, feeds the soil life. Phosphate does play a role. We want organic fertilizer, but some soils need some phosphate and so on, so that's not a bad choice. And it does work. Uh, so, um, raise the content of uh, fungi and then you get into the real range where our um, fruits on the land will thrive. Uh, Johnson Sue, uh, Sue is his wife, and this made the round around the world. So when this came out, we were calling each other, people dealing with soil, we were calling, have you seen this already? Yeah, I'm, I'm just amazed and we have set up that already and, and so... And this is sort of a compost that is uh, bringing in more uh, soil fungi, because if you have a compost that you turn over all the time, you destroy the fungi. And so this is a no turn but aerated and you should always put some cow dung because there's a good biology in there. Um, the species in the compost that they measured, four weeks, 22 weeks, that's where it's normally brought out. And then if you leave it for a year, you get so many more species. And these are the important ones. And yeah, thanks to Dr. Johnson, I took the slides from him. And uh, luckily he didn't go for boring uh, scientific publications that nobody reads, but went for uh, well, presentations and YouTube videos, so watch some of that, he's, he's great. Yeah, so now we are uh, having seven elements, so enriching soil biology, that's what I was showing you, but also adding missing trace elements and not putting anything in the soil what is like taking that away. So now seven elements, and like I've listed the, these here, you can have the slides if you want, if you watch the video, you can stop it here for a moment. Uh, yeah, but seven elements and still the most important is missing. The ley lines. The, ley lines, <laughs> the vital energy flows. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> and now that's something that is, well, I'm a geomancer since 30 years. I worked in uh, regenerative agriculture for many years now and now this is coming together. Amazing! <laughs> and uh, if we look in a region, what is happening? So the vital energy and from uh, Dane Winter I learned that it's a plasma flow, the cold plasma. Uh, it's the longitudinal nodes where compression is possible and the centripetal force feeds the plants. And so I've, I've represented this by battery, so the energies flow, but then there are sort of uh, little suckers, parasitic entities uh, that suck the energy, because this is very, very, this is the most valuable stuff on Earth. So many want it. And who, who made us believe that it doesn't exist? Maybe some that want to steal it. <laughs> and uh, like railway lines are a killer and uh, so a lot of other stuff and so um, we don't get the energy, plants don't get the energy and now how can we deal with that? We cut those suckers off and that's done in geomancy and uh, it's not that difficult so always check the level because some of these entities can really be pretty much uh, uh, overwhelming if you're not prepared and we need to keep our limits, so not get into danger. And uh, so if we are sort of having full energy flow, we have the energy, the plants have the energy, and that needs to be applied in the land. And I realized this in, um, in a holiday last, week, last year, 
uh, I was on Helgoland, that's German island out in the North, North Sea. And when I was, while I was there, I had a good holiday, great weather, being on the beach all day. And in the evening, as always, I checked my personal energy and expected it to be somewhere here, and it was very low. I, I checked, of course, I, you, can, you can ask what is happening, and then I realized the whole energy, you can maybe sense it in the upper picture, uh, energy at the time was very low of the whole island. And if anybody knows that island, people are more like, mm, like that. It's not like sparkling with life, not at all, <laughs> even though it's beautiful. <laughs> And then I had a job, and instead of holiday, I did geomancy work. I looked for the ley lines. A big ley line was uh, sort of sucked out so severely that the whole island was having so little energy that my energy level was sort of sucked out by the environment. <laughs> and I didn't like that. So I went there, and I did some um, repair work, getting those, well, very big... Uh, like uh, parasitic entities uh, out and uh, yeah, energy level was rising. Uh, huh? what, what parasitic entity? Well, that's, that's not too much for now. Uh, it's like, well, demonic, uh, demonic powers. But I learned from Dan to, to use scientific language because demon is already making a, a field, but we want to be sort of clear and it's like um, parasites. no they are par parasites and so it's like and how do you get parasites on such a line you bomb it yeah. with 30,000 tons of, 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 of bombs in after second world war there was no other reason for that they said okay they wanted to eliminate the island which is ridiculous and so the trauma makes the uh, lines susceptible to like being sucked out by parasites. It's, it's all bleeding, it's bleeding charred. Yeah. And wherever the bleeding is, the parasites get food. Yeah, absolutely. And in a healthy system, when we are high of energy, these, they can't reach us. And that's a good, uh, good news. <laughs> so then I did some geomancy work. Maybe you can sense it's... Uh, quite a bit better here and that was work of m myself for one and a half days so uh, but people need to keep on it it's like we um, uh, brushing the floor you need to repeat this from time to time so keeping energy up whether it be on an island on the arable land on on your own uh, piece of land in your home on your body keep your energy flows right and that's what more and more people are now doing uh, the well great thing is uh, that uh, dr uwe milke he is uh, he has a doctorate in uh, agricultural sciences and he became a geomancer a few years back and he now works with many farms with conventional farms uh, <coughs> with like clearing the land He's very successful with that. And he also told me that it's the main factor. He, as an agricultural scientist, advisor to many, many farmers, and he told me that farms, farmers are very interested now. So he makes like cold acquisition. He calls a farmer and tells him, did you look at the vital energy in your land? And many of them say, okay, let's have a look. And so this is a picture, he does also scientific follow-up on that. On the left-hand side, it's the normal low energy situation. What is almost common? It's, it's crazy, and it's getting less. It's really getting less. So we are in danger of like losing it if we don't really work on this. We must wisen up, we must like take care of our energy supplies. And if we don't, we will all become depressed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and so he did uh, make a clearing for the field and nothing else. Clearing and some, uh, like putting some information on, on this part and not on that one. And here is the glyphosate. Ho hopefully no other chair will collapse now. <laughs> uh, so that is terribly, uh, well, sucking energy. 
the stuff. If you, if you clear the land and put it on that land, it's not like that anymore. It's still a chelator, so we, I would never put it, but many farmers still do. So rather improve the situation step by step to well, make survival of the farm possible at all. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's great. Um, you just said that the animals in cages create the geopathic, and ancestor trauma creates geopathic and the bottom. And so these are all ways in which the symmetry of the land has lost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you for pointing out, because like the, the, the deceased ones, so the, 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 uh, the ghost of the deceased ones, traumatically deceased ones, they're a huge problem in the land. And that's part, it's parasitic entities, and the other part is deceased humans, but also deceased animals yeah. that are traumatically this deceased. Is connected also with which is Neil's going to be sharing about healing ancestor memory in the land. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for, for reminding me. I, I didn't put it in here, but it's... Yeah. Yeah. Die, yeah. The, right the anthroposophs say they keep earthbound, yep. and that can be for centuries even. So let's have a ceremony that stops people from dying fractally, right? Well, from knowing how to die successfully. <laughs> <laughs> and we could also, if if somebody is interested, we can do some practical work around and do something for the region, like releasing uh, some some deceased ones. Yeah. So those interested, just talk to me, we, we will do it. And there are other geomancers, I guess. Who is a geomancer? Okay, yeah. Okay, great. So let's, let's do something for the region. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, geomancy in uh, vineyards. Scientific background is there. Dan Winter and also somebody from Austria. He has written a book on the science of like the vital energy flows. He called it hypersound. Which is pronoun compression. Mm -hmm. So it's also a, a good approach, I think. Fractality in the array. The distribution is the heavy. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, for you all know about, or those who have dealt a bit with like the energy in, a, in an apartment, in a, in a house, you know of these grids. Uh, Hartman grid, Curry grid, uh, and so on lightning grid and that's what I always thought and um, it's normally uh, well people consider this very technically and now there is a group uh, new geomancy it's only in German so far and they do it in a great way so they measured further what else is there and they found oh a lot more is flowing there and some in uh, sinus form and so on and so this is uh, sort of a very much nicer picture than this technical one. So, and this is everywhere. We can measure this here in the room. Like, like uh, this is two and a half meters, uh, or roughly yards. Uh, and uh, so this is all having specific emotional uh, energies with it. A very, very complex system, very nice. And there are points where you can sort of access the field better and so on. <laughs> All right, so, uh, no, that's uh, what I will skip. Um, Ralph, just to say, Stephanie Hardy knows books that Valerie translated into French. So he actually measured Hartman, Curry, Paley, Palm, Lines. He measured which metal and what frequency. Most of the book those lines. Yeah. Yeah, that should be uh, compared. So I think that would add up nicely. Yeah, thank you. Um, People have recently done work on uh, energy lines in the uh, middle of Germany, in a, in a middle, middle high mountain. Uh, there is a sort of mostly natural, uh, uh, well, sort of like a huge Stonehenge that is 20 kilometers in diameter. 12 points, normally like very pointy rocks and things like that. If you connect those, it's meeting exactly in one point. So absolutely amazing. One of the biggest energy uh, uh, structures uh, probably at least in Europe. People have worked on it and one of them was connected to people in India. When they did the release work, the clearing, it was sensed in India. So that's, that's something. So that tells us how important this 
work is. Where is in that point right now? Yeah, it must be something interesting. At this uh, a big stone with a, like a little carving. Uh -huh. And that's ancient, thousands of years old. I hope no one's living there. No, no but, but they, they did uh, um, work on this uh, grid with uh, many people, people at every point connecting with each other. They, they did the history research, and you must really look at all levels. What happened here, trauma, war, uh, releasing uh, the, the deceased ones and uh, uh, kicking out the suckers. Uh, so a lot is happening, so that's, that's great. So we will get there, so we have a good future uh, if we make it. Yeah, uh, how can we work in practice? I need to check the time because uh, lunch break is a hard one. So, <laughs> yeah, physical expand understanding, uh, specifically Dan Winter's teachings, etheric vital energy flows, ley lines, also dragon lines. Those are the lines going along the um, the ravines and the no, Seki. Okay. Ah, okay. Seki. Okay, and then. Uh, look at the elemental beings, they are also crucial and like look at the mental, the, the deceased ones, earthbound deceased, so I had it in here already, parasitic entities and then the cosmic angels, archangels and so on. I'm getting away from this because I now connect to the like source of uh, the universe, source of this universe, because these are systems that have been built and I want to connect directly and there are proven tools and uh, what we need is a reliable test set and luckily there are so the traditional divining rods where they they found silver and gold and so they told people this is of the devil don't use that and they were looking for silver <laughs> and then sending those poor guys into the silver mines to work <laughs> yeah it was done in a clever way okay so the normal divining rods and uh, so there's a lot also scientific ones with like different lengths uh, so um, yeah a crucial thing uh, as a hint uh, create space shield it from manipulation if you test and then you create a space that is protected from manipulation you pretty often have different test test results and Wow! <laughs> Good we understand all this now. So, uh, yeah, okay, so perceive what is going on. Horrible. These things are often used to just block energy flows and uh, sometimes they are not even connected to the grid. So the, the, the story of energy production is just uh, distraction. And, uh, whoops, uh, yeah, first question, can we do that here and now. So maybe there's something that is sort of uh, not right. So uh, what can we do uh, that has the highest priority for healing? If we do testing, many people are testing everything and they test, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, and be afraid of that one. And that is because they don't do priority. If I ask, is, is that one uh, relevant? I get, no. What is the most relevant, the most ancient of these, and then I release that and all the other stuff can disappear. Yep. So work efficiently. So much bullshit done. And uh, always ask, do we need to know more? And anything else that needs to be done now. And so work gets very successful with that. And uh, yeah, now eight elements of regenerative agriculture. They are in this book for the first time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, makes high nutritional density. Eight elements here, continued. So there's a much, much detail behind that obviously, so I can't do this all in a short presentation. I just want to show you and like give you the chance to, to read this. Nutrient uh, density, there's Dan Kittredge from uh, Massachusetts, he's doing great work on that. And uh, then you can work with aquaculture. This is Dr. Stefan Hügel, he did a doctorate with me on aquaculture because 
besides all the trace elements, one of the crucial things for a good future is No. Our brain development. Yes. DHA, EPA, fatty acids. If we don't have that, our brains degrade or don't even develop, and children don't have that. And that's a tragedy around the world. An aquaculture system can heal that because we can like have a water reservoir, uh, and then we, we keep fish in there. So in the uh, warmer regions, it's tilapia. For here, it would be uh, the, the grass carp. They can uh, eat uh, exclusively on the floating plants that are very, very fast growing. And then we have a water reservoir that produces a lot of fish. And uh, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, of course, the water needs to be dressed. But I don't do that because there's so much known about that. So this um, vitalization, the, Vortices, vortices, that's absolutely great, and uh, especially for agriculture as well. The imploder.com is just merged with fractalwater.com and we're expanding beautifully, so it's cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a really nice system. I, I, I have it myself and I, I use it. There are many systems out there, so just compare, sense what is really doing the job in a proper way. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So tree crops, also great resources from uh, 100 years back. So people knew, and then it was all pushed aside, and wars were uh, initiated to make people forget. And uh, so um, my own contribution, besides now this blueprint for a good future, is garden communities. And I suggest to cluster many small farms, small gardening operations. Many people do this alone, and they have nobody around, it gets boring when they have children, children have no other kids around. So cluster this, my, maybe 150 to 200 people, and then the rural areas become really, really exciting. And that's uh, Garden Communities, the book is already published, and uh, many people are starting to work on that. Small farms feed the world, this is the farm of Dan Kittredge I talked about, so this is this book, uh, Garden Communities, and reverse over-urbanization, because it's getting crazy. And uh, how will people live there without the vital energy that is sucked off by constructed structures? And uh, so uh, that's something where uh, I think the rural areas are the most crucial for creating a good future. And as I showed you, the vital energy flows Yes. Uh, oops. Ah, this is uh, okay. I, I copied with the no, with, with the voice from a video of mine. <laughs> Confusing. Why somebody st speak in German? Even myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm bilocating. <laughs> it's easy with video, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Please support me with this book. I don't get this out alone. Help me. It's about contents. So there are still errors that are corrected already, but it's like the contents. Do you have additional ideas? Let me know. And, and I, I want to bring this out, and I have brought uh, quite a few. And uh, so um, that's something where we can all uh, give hope to many people. And this is what is lacking. You know, companies, they have a vision. Otherwise, the company will not develop. Our societies don't have a vision so far. So now let's create a vision. I've made a step there. And this can link in with other great developments that are going, but it needs to be an overall blueprint. And then we get something that is really, really beautiful, creating a good future and a blue-green planet. Thank you very much. <laughs>